This video uses air gunnery concepts from the above videos, so I recommend watching them if you haven't already. The N3 air gun sight is a reflector sight used in US aircraft and consists of a single ring with a backup ring and bead sight. They work in the same principles, but with the ring and bead sight, you need to keep aligned with the sight for accurate shooting. For the N3A, it's pretty simple. The radius is 35 mils and the diameter is 70 mils. And just like with other sights, we can use these as part of ranging a target. So using the formula we've learned before, if the fighter takes up the radius, it's going to be 280 meters, but if it fills the whole diameter of the sight, it's going to be 140 meters away. Remember, when we go into these scenarios, we want to think of them as either being low speed or higher speed, and here are the rings which reflect those scenarios. Now we'll demonstrate the use of the N3A in air-to-air -air gunnery. Here we're in a tight rolling fight, so it's going to be a low airspeed scenario at about 45 degrees angle off. Slowing it down and isolating the 45 degree ring. Place him on it, we can fire. Now I'm firing the cannon and the machine gun at the same time, so if the cannon scores a good hit, it's going to take the airplane out. And this one is going to be low speed again as we're barrel rolling with the target. We're going to see him increase to about 45 to 90 degrees angle off. Lead and shoot. So in the slow motion, we'll isolate 45 to 90. We just fire and let him pass through that point. We'll score a hit and he's going to be out. In this scenario, we've been diving with the bandit pretty much straight and level, so we're in a high airspeed situation. So we need to apply more lead at lower angles off. at it in slow motion. Remember at higher speeds it's going to be 30 to 45 degrees off so we need to place him well under the nose to get that shot. So here the band's in a turning fight. It's going to be low speed. It's going to be close to 45 degrees angle off on the fire. And hit him again for good measure. And here we isolate the 45 degree ring and we start firing. We're going to place him around that point and that way we can at least score a hit as he moves through it. Yeah, the band is going to be coming back to the left and to the right, be low airspeed. So as he comes back to the right, we get in front, let him pass through with about 30 to 45 degrees angle off and we'll take the shot. Here we can see as he reverses back to the right, his angle off will increase to about 30 to 45 degrees and we fire, score the hits and then we've taken him out. Here as we follow this Fokwuf, we'll come back in reverse and just roll over and reposition behind him. It'll be a nice low angle off shot between 10 and 20 degrees, so we pretty much just put him in the ring on the side. So at low airspeed, you see as he slaps out. So we're looking about 10 to 20 degrees angle off as we fire. And we can take him out. This is going to be a nose to nose pass while he's climbing and I'm descending. So he's got a lot of airspeed, so I'll consider it a high airspeed scenario. Pull him under the nose and take the shot. Here we can see as he's coming up, it's going to be about 20 degrees angle off. Put him just under the nose, fire, we score that good cannon hit and take off the wing. Here we've already hit this bandit and he's now climbing, so it's going to be low airspeed. I'm going to finish him off using the cannon. So we get him to between 30 and 45 degrees angle off as we take the shot. We take him out. So firing the cannon individually, we isolate to 30 to 45, and watch for the second round. It's not that one, but the next one. We score the hit. So now looking at the next one. We'll isolate to 45 degrees angle off because he starts a turn, and that'll increase his angle off to us. So we try and time this next shot, so he hits that 45 degree point. Get the hit, and we take him out. Here the Bandit and I have both been diving, so we're in a high airspeed scenario, so it's going to be relatively low angle off when we take the shot. Scoring the hit, it was a pilot kill. So we isolate the 10 to 20 degree ring, and we'll see that my first shots fall short, because the tracers fall behind the target. So we're going to let the airplane stabilise, I'm going to try again, pull him up to the 20 degree ring, 
Take that shot. Score the hits. Pilot kill and the canopy flies off. Here the bandit and I were both going uphill so we know it's low airspeed. About 20 degrees angle off as we take the shot. The closure is very high because we're head on at this point. So when we get him on that 20 degree ring, we're going to fire and start pulling up to do our best to keep him there before he flies past. Here we're diving down on the target. And what we'll notice is that our closure isn't that great, so we can assume his target speed is high as well. So we're trying to get inside of his turn and pull some lead at about 20 to 30 degrees. We can take him. So here you can see the effect of the high G turn with the graying out. Put him at about that 20 to 30 degree point, take the shot, let him pass up so we can see any damage. Since we take him out, we can relax our turn and then get ready for the next attack. Here's now the high aspect shot with a band that's been turning, so it's going to be low air speed. Comes along about 20 to 30 degrees, we can shoot, let him pass through our bullets. So initially he's not at a very high angle off notice that as he gets closer it's going to start increasing. So we need to ensure we're pulling some lead on him before we fire. Then we keep pulling to bring our nose in front of the airplane and try and score the hits as he flies past. Here we've been chasing a bandit and straight and level for the most part. So it's going to be a high airspeed. He's going to jink left and right. It's a matter of letting him pass through the side and taking the shot. He will isolate only 10 degrees this time. I'm just going to take that shot and let him pass through. Seeing the way he's going to start rolling the wings back to the left, we know he's going to jink back to our left. So we'll pull the nose up and let him pass through and take another shot. Here we're chasing this guy, but he's doing some decent maneuvering, so it's going to be low airspeed. While he's jinking, he's about 20 degrees off at times, so we're just going to try and get him into the ring as we start shooting. The guy's being pretty aggressive with his maneuvering, so we get a little bit lucky as we sequence our shots and can score the hit on his wingtip to take it off. This will be a low airspeed scenario. After he scores a kill, he starts banking to the right and we cut him off. Take a first shot, we miss, pull up and take another shot, and we score the hit. So as the bandits turn into the right, his angle off will increase. Expect between 45 and 90. So as we relax G, we see him come up again, but we've missed. So we increase the G and in lead. Put him around 45 to 90 and take the shot again. Relax the G, let him come forward. Then we can see we put him in fire. And we see as we're coming behind this bandit, he turns. And then he'll reverse to the left. As he sees us, take our initial shot, let him pass through. Damaged him pretty well, so now it's about maintaining the pressure to finish him off. Going to jink into the right, then back to the left. It'll be about 20 to 30 degrees angle off when we finish him off. So here we can isolate the 20 to 30 degrees ring. So we're firing to let him go through. We also begin our reversal. Score a hit. Here he's a little more evasive, and we can see his underbelly, so we need to place him at the top of the side about 20 degrees. And that finishes him off. Here we're in a high speed dive with the bandit, so it's going to be high airspeed. As he's coming up, it's pretty gentle, and then he rolls back over, so we haven't lost too much speed. We need to pull the lead about 30 degrees and take the shot. So as we're coming back down over the horizon, we're going to place him about 30 degrees angle off. After we take the shot, we relax the G to see if we've caused any damage. And we can reposition for another shot, but he's taken out. Here we forced a bandit to overshoot us. So as he goes up into a climb, his airspeed is going to be essentially zero as he stalls it out. So this we don't have to worry about any angle off, we just place him in the sight and fire away. We cause enough damage that we can see his wing will come off and he hits the water.
So remember that if your target airspeed is going to be zero, such as when an airplane is stalling or spinning, then there's no need for any lead at all. It's just a matter of trying to hold the target in the center of the sight and taking the shots. There'll be an uncut version of this video as well you can check out. That'll have some more dogfighting sequences in it, as well as showing the full scenario so you can see how the situation developed. So you can check that out with the link at the end of the video. That completes this tutorial on how to use the N3A gun sight. If you liked it, let me know with the like button and a comment. And don't forget to be a subscriber with that bell icon so you can see new videos as they're released.